Let's talk the Aggies. Let's talk Texas A&M at LSU. Spurs minus 11.5. Just kind of balanced between 13 and 11.5. Uh, it really depended where you got that number at. We both, we both <laughs> took we LSU. And we got it at 11.5. And, and we yeah, got we it at 11.5. Yeah, and we, we, we took LSU uh, minus 12. Of course, as an A&M fan, I was impressed with the way that the team played and the way that they rallied behind Elijah Robinson. I thought early in the game, they did some real nice, like a real nice job shutting down Jalen Daniels. And then all of a sudden, he started using his legs. And then you started having to use a spy. And then you didn't have an extra guy in coverage. And then all of a sudden, well, Malik, Malik Neighbors, Brian Thomas, Lacey just shredded our corners, which is what we anticipated. I thought Jalen Henderson played a fine game. I thought Bobby Petrino was in his bag that first half, that second quarter. He was in his, even that first first quarter when they were driving um, and that penalty. He was in his bag. So I, I thought he did a great job calling that game. Uh, it just uh, was unfortunate. Some injuries caught up to you. And, uh, well, the news broke today. It's not Mark Stoops. <laughs> it's not Mark Stoops. It is Mike Elko. That's going to be the next coach at Texas A&M. And I think it's a great hire. We'll talk more about that. But uh, I'm more happy with Mike Elko than I am with Mark Stoops as a Texas A&M fan. An outsider's perspective, they're not going to have that perspective. I think I think people look at that as an equivalent hire. But uh, look, I mean, in the comments, let me know what you think. I mean, I I would assume that people think in general Mark Stoops is a better hire. I would disagree with that personally, and I know Christopher thinks that Mark Stoops is a really good coach. I do too, and it probably would have been a decent hire. But uh, I'm happy with where we're at. Just got to keep those guys locked in. You know, uh, what transfer portal opens in like. What uh December fourth officially? So you got you got about a week, Mike Elko, to win the team over, which I think is part of the reason why he was brought in. So. I I don't think he's gonna have a hard problem with that. I think he keeps Elijah Robinson on staff. Hopefully, that's obviously best case scenario. He, he's got to nail the offense coordinator position, and I think that's gonna be a pretty attractive spot, right? Bobby Petrino obviously will be a candidate. Kevin Johns over from um Duke obviously had a very, very a lot of. Success. That's there with Ryan Leonard. He can bring over yep. some guys there from Duke if he can convince them to get rid of a, a trade and a Duke degree. But an AM degree is also very, very good. Yeah, I think this is just to me, I was impressed. We'll talk about the game first. Like you mm-hmm. mentioned the effort, rallying behind Robinson, scheming up things for Henderson. He made plays with his legs, he extended plays. Obviously, he looked like an inexperienced guy at times. This is not the best LSU defense in the world. You, but you were on the road, playing your rival, and you were playing, right? There should be Heisman winner in Jaden Daniels, and you went toe to toe with yeah. them for a while. We'll we'll talk. We'll bring that up again. Thank you for bringing that up. But keep going. Yeah, the the fourth quarter got away from you a little bit, but it was also just like the attrition of your secondary just got to you, got to you, and like there's only so much you can do in a four quarter game if you're Bob Petrino to just scheme up points it's it's hard to do that for four quarters and and um it was tough today walker at time at times looked nice max right i mean he had a touchdown but he dropped some key passes it was tough to see that and i smith did his thing evan stewart obviously yeah you missed him but also you have some talent there on the back end a little disappointed in bryce anderson i thought he missed some tackles i think he's trying to do a little bit too much for that defense and that secondary and I, I don't blame him, but at the same time, it's frustrating when you have a guy in front of the sticks to make a tackle and you just don't you don't make it. And obviously, getting off the field against a team like LSU and Jane Danos is just the utmost importance on third down. And it's hard, easier said than done for sure, but it is it is what it is. You know, the same problems that you've seen, at least on the field, with these players and vulnerabilities, like they, they were there for the reason, right? It was you weren't just gonna fire Jimbo and these things just magically be fixed. Not give up, give Mike Elko an off season. You know, give this staff an off season to get him in get some turnover out there. But we'll see what happens. But yeah, I also want to say Harold Perkins was incredibly impressive. Just like his feel for the game, as always, doing his thing. Yeah, he's like I thought they have a nice scheme for him. It was a madhouse, right? That rush, but also like Henderson's gonna take off, and when he does, you better be there for him and. He had some plays to extend drives, and Perkins got him by a shoestring, and that's the difference in a ball game where you have a you have a chance to get Jane Daniels on the ground, and I get that's way easier said than done, 
but you don't do it. And he scampers for 49 yards and boom, they're, they're two players in, in the end zone, you know. Yeah, Jaden Daniels should win the Heisman. Uh, leads the country in total yards, total touchdowns, QBR. He has 90 plays of over 20 yards, legs and arm, right? And don't catch me with this, oh, you know, he has elite receivers around him. Yeah, he does have elite receivers around him, but he's putting the money, like the ball on the money downfield. We talked about it. One thing we need to see him improve this year is his deep ball, and it has been there immaculately. Yeah, sure, he missed one in this game. Oh, let's be nitpicky. Blah. He got rocked on it too, didn't he? He got rocked. Well, actually, he missed Walton Nolan. That, that was Walton Nolan got a, got a holding penalty. Oh, that's that, that was a hole. That's my bad. That, it was off his, play got rocked on. It was yeah. off his back foot, right? But uh, he's been absolutely incredible. Like no one is doing what he is doing, and it's not even close. I know Bo Nix has had a really, really good season. Sure, he could win a national championship. That'd be awesome. Bo Nix could be a first round quarterback. That's awesome. But the best player in college football, the most valuable player to their team, is Jaden Daniels. It is not even close. So. That is uh, my speech on Jane Daniels. But I will talk about Mike Elko one more time real quickly before we move on. With Elko as a defensive coordinator, Texas A&M was 34-14. and 14. Without him as his defensive coordinator, they were 12-12. and 12. And a lot of those games were lost because they gave up points. Some of it was on the offense, but there were games where you let teams run the ball, you let teams throw the ball. Not great. And Mike Elko has had a top 25 defense with Bowling Green, Wake Forest, Notre Dame, I mean, Texas A&M, and Duke. He's done it everywhere he has been. So people who are like, oh, he's just part of the Jimbo Fisher tree, he is not a part of the Jimbo Fisher tree. He was the one singular hire that Jimbo got right on his staff. Yeah, and he got out of there, and he had immediate success elsewhere, and immediate downfall happened at A&M. And I think people in the house know that. If you're there in the athletic department, in the football complex – Around the program, like you understand exactly how much Mike Elko meant to that team. And a lot of the problem times where the problems started occurring, you saw it was, oh wait, Mike Elko's gone. Like that 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 kind of lined up with that. And like, yeah. I, I you mentioned I thought I would have I like Mark Stoops. I do think this is a better hire than Mark Stoops, but I don't I don't wouldn't have the outrage that Mark Stoops had. I thought this should have been the pick in the first place over him. Right, like I, yeah, I I think he's really good. I think he can do some yeah. things there. Hold the yeah. program together. The problem is, is like there are certain things that I and them that you have to deal with that you didn't have to deal with at Duke, boosters, fan. But he knows. He knows exactly he knows what those it. are. And so, what gives me confidence is like he took this job knowing exactly what needs to be done, right off the field, right. And and he's gonna have his ducks in line. Kevin Sumlin, Jimbo Fisher. Didn't have everything in order in their lives, right? For the past what, like, twelve years, at a of AM football, ten years of AM football. So, like, I think Mike Elko's an adult. He's a professional guy. He has the stuff in line. I think he can really succeed at AM. Now, is the ceiling an national championship? I don't know, but I think the floor is significantly higher than it has been in many, many years. 